Hi, everybody. I'm so excited you are joining us today. We have a featured interview with Ainsley Stringer. She has a really awesome store on Etsy called Blue String Boutique, and I'm so excited to talk to her today. So before we begin, let me just introduce myself. My name is Gina Whitehouse. I am the creator of YouAreMoreThanMom.com. I'm a mom of two. I'm an entrepreneur, and I am so excited to talk to Ainsley today. So thank you so much for being here. Um, how did we get connected? I think we got connected on Instagram, right? Yes, it was yes. Instagram. <laughs> awesome. I love social media. Um, little tip right here for all of you guys right now, you've got to be on social media. Even if you don't have a website, just take an Instagram handle out or start a business um, page, a like page on Facebook. Just start sharing content, sharing, share what you're doing, and that's just your number one step in starting. So. Ainsley, again, I'm so excited to talk to you today. Um, so Ainsley has a shop, it's on Etsy. You could just go in there and search and you'll find it, Blue String Boutique, and what they do is they make all kinds of neat decals, stickers, um, signs, and wall decor. So why don't you just go ahead, Ainsley, and just share a little bit about your business and what you do. Um, so we started our business uh, in, De uh, I guess, around December of 2014. Um, so we're coming up on two years. Um, we started uh, our business um, uh, on a whim, to be completely honest. There was no planning that went on to it, um, which I feel is a lot of people, how a lot of people get started. Um, but we just started by making um, a sign that we wanted to hang up in um, who is now our son's, uh, his nursery. And one of our friends saw it and was like, hey, I want one of those um, for my daughter's nursery. And then um, a couple months later, she had her second child and um, was like, hey, I need another one. And by the way, I have some other friends who want one. So if you want to start a business page or anything, um, you know, we'll send, we'll send them to you to order. And that's where it all started. Um, we didn't, like I said, we didn't have any planning or thought that really went into it at first. Um, and at the time I was working full time. So it was more of just kind of a hobby that started. Um, and then in, let's see, I guess it was September of last year that, um, you know, we decided that whenever uh, our son came in February that I would be a stay at home mom. And I didn't want to completely give up working um, just because having that outlet and being able to, you know, do something with my spare time uh, when I wasn't taking care of our son um, to be able to contribute something and still have that creative outlet and still run our little business. So that's kind of where we started that. <laughs> Very cool. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you did before you were a stay at home mom? Um, and uh, I graduated with my BBA in marketing uh, from Texas Women's University in December of 2013. And um, directly after I graduated, I actually uh, did door-to-door -door sales, <laughs> um, doing like AT&T, U-verse type stuff, like upgrading people. Um, people were not very nice, but it was definitely one of those times <laughs> that um, – you know, it taught me to be fearless and it taught me to cool. um, approach people and, you know, understand how sales worked. It's definitely a crash course in like learning how to sell. Um, but after that, I um, worked a part time job uh, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And then I went into sales at a jewelry company uh, here in Dallas called Dallas Gold and Silver Exchange. Um, and I got to learn a lot about uh, gold and silver, um, as far as bullion goes, rare coins, and of course the jewelry side uh, with diamonds and wedding bands and things like that. Um, I did that for about four months, um, and they had a position open up in the accounting department. Um, didn't think that I was going to get it, <laughs> but, uh, you know, put my faith in God and where he wanted me to go and what he wanted me to do within that company, and um, I ended up getting the position. Um, doing the accounting for the largest store uh, in um, in the company, uh, which is based here in Dallas. Um, and I got to, you know, do the accounting for it, got to handle some of the new inventory that would come in um, and get a lot of experience that I get to use now in my own business. Um, 
but I did that until February of this year, so I did that for almost a year and a half, um, and then I left to be a stay-at-home mom, and of course had my business throughout then as well, um, so yeah, that's where I've cool. kind of been. <laughs> No, that's great. And I, while you're talking, it just made me think of so many other things that I want to ask you also. We, <laughs> right before we press record on this, for you, those of you watching, we kind of went through some questions. And so I'm going to spring one on you right now that I didn't ask you previously. Um, how do you feel, or how would you explain, you know, those skills that you used to have while you were working, how those kind of translated into what you're doing now? Um, I think the biggest thing was when I, you know, sales have always been something that I've been comfortable with. Um, I don't, you know, I mean, I can be given a product and say, hey, can you go try to sell it to this person? And, you know, that doesn't, some people it's, you know, terrifying. You're like, no, I'm not going to go do that. <laughs> but for me, it's not an issue. Um, but the accounting part was definitely the thing that I struggled with in our own business and being able to do that and see the different things that you have to keep track of um, was definitely the most beneficial thing and being able to use that skill set of you know what money is coming in what money is going out did you keep the receipts are you keeping track of your taxes um, and just being mindful of all those things was probably the biggest you know way that I used those skills um, like I said, my degree is in marketing, and there's a lot more that goes into that <laughs> than I think people realize. Um, and I don't even have time to do as much marketing for our own business as I would like, just because it entails making sure you get great product photos and when to post them and who's viewing them. And um, again, that's something that I'm comfortable with. I just haven't had enough time to do. <laughs> right. But it but, seems like you've gotten a lot of business just through word of mouth, huh? Yeah, that's definitely the biggest thing. I think that goes into the sales part is not being afraid to talk to people about, hey, this yeah. is my business, go check it out. <laughs> and also probably you get a lot of referrals too. Mm -hmm. Yes. People. I think when it comes down to sales, like you said, I think a lot of people are fearful with it. Obviously you have, I mean, a natural talent for just selling, like you said. I mean, I could come up to you and you know tell you to sell cell phones and you'd probably do great at it. <laughs> but I know for myself, selling has always been hard. Like when I was a kid, I was that kid that took home that brochure from school that the teacher gave you saying that you had to sell like all these um, rolls of wrapping paper for Christmas or boxes of chocolate. And I wouldn't do it because I just didn't want to ask people and my mom would end up like buying the stuff, you know. <laughs> but now that I'm also in the situation where it's like a sale, it's sales, you know, um, I found that. I can sell as long as it's something I believe in. Yeah. You know, it has to be something I'm passionate about because you were going to hear a lot of no's, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, in my industry, you're going to hear so many no's that you got to keep pushing for that one yes, and that's what keeps you going until you find the next yes. So, but I think that's great. Like what you said is that, you know, it's natural for you, but, um, you know, if you just work on, you know, talking to people you know, sharing with them, um, especially with your kind of product, you're going to get referrals. People are going to see it in someone's house and they're going to say, Oh, where did you get that? You know, where'd you get that beautiful wall decal or whatever it is, you know? Yeah. So. And the one thing that I do want to touch on is I wasn't always a natural with talking to people in sales. So for anybody watching this who is thinking, Oh, well, I, I'm not like that. I can't do it. Yeah. Um, it is a learned skill. It's something that, um, you know, I was, always a little bit fearful talking to people until I did that door-to-door -door sales job, which I didn't even think I was going to take in the first place. Um, but that's what taught me like, yeah, you're going to get a lot of no's, but when you get that one, yes, every, like everything that you're doing is worth it. Yeah. Um, so it's a learned skill. So if you don't have it, you can work on it. It's something that you can do. Um, you don't have to be afraid of it. <laughs> right. Going door to door, man, that's hard. Like I think now, I, I got to ask you, now being on the other side of it where you're at home and you have a sleeping baby and you have someone come and knock at your door, you're like, no. Yeah, we <laughs> right? actually, yeah and it's funny because like most of the stuff that people would, you know, go door to door for, like we already have because I worked in that industry. So um, it's funny, like uh, they'll have people who are like training to do the job and I'm like, listen, I'm not going to buy anything from you, but I know the four things that you're going to try to do. Right. <laughs> so I'll let you practice and I'll let you know what you did wrong. <laughs> Good. 
<laughs> That's so funny that you let them practice. That's awesome. <laughs> Okay, well, one of the questions that I get from women a lot, actually, um, like I was just telling you right now, for those of you who are watching, in two weeks, actually on September 13th, um, we will be releasing through yourmorethemom.com our Uniquely You workbook. And so it's an awesome, uh, I believe it's an 18, 19 page brainstorming workbook for anyone who, you know, is a stay-at-home mom but wants to build a business but you don't know what to do. Like, what makes you uniquely you, right? So we have a group of women right now who are going through the workbook with me to kind of test it so we can go back and tweak it before we release it to the public. And the number one question that I'm getting right now is, Gina, how do you make time for your business at home? So I'm going to let you answer that, Ainsley, and tell me how you make time for your business at home, especially that you have a very small child. You have a six-month-old son. Yes, uh, our son is six months old, and um, I will preface this with it's not easy in the beginning um, trying to make time for business because you know small children are very needy, which they're made to be that way, but it's very difficult to yeah. find time. Um, for me, the biggest thing was building a schedule for my son and finding our time um, to do our business stuff within that schedule. Um, our son is a great sleeper. He takes about a two hour nap every day. Um, he's napping right now, <laughs> but um, uh, he takes about a two hour nap every day so I can do some of our more quiet work that isn't um, great. You know, super loud to wake him. Um, but for the most part, we do a lot of our work at night uh, after he goes to bed. Um, we put him to bed between 7.30 and 8 every night. And after that, I do as much as I can until about 1 or 2 in the morning, which sounds insane to a lot of people. <laughs> like, how do you have the energy the next day? Well, he sleeps. So he sleeps from about um, 8 p.m. until uh, anywhere from 8.30 to 10 the next morning. Okay. Um, so, you know, we do have that blessing of him being a great sleeper, which I know doesn't happen for everyone. Um, but he, he is getting to the point where he's awake more during the day and he's more active and he's becoming more independent. Um, so for anybody who is trying to figure out when you're going to do anything, um, you know, with a small child on your hands, um, the one thing that, uh, we have been, you know, starting to do more of is putting him in his little extra saucer or bouncy seat or, um, something like that. And I'll be able to do some of our design work on the computer. Uh, while he's in the room with me. Um, obviously, I'm not going to put him outside uh, with me when I'm doing stuff with like our saws or sander or anything. Um, but any of our quiet work that he can be around, um, we'll put him in his bouncer and let him play independently and still interact with him and not leave him unattended, um, but still be able to get work done. <laughs> That's great. That's, I mean, and like I, we were talking about before, it's just such a blessing that he is a good sleeper. But even those of you, I will say, those of you who don't have the best sleepers, um, some things that you can do is, again, work during the nap time, make sure that they're taking naps, and even, you know, if you can get it before they, they're awake, you know, um, an hour before to just put some work in, like whatever you can do consistently, even if it's just a half an hour or an hour every day, totally helps. So thank you for sharing that with us. Um, I will tell you my one little tip, or as we call them now, hacks, <laughs> is, Barney. Like, I will fully admit that I will put my kid in front of the TV to get work done, but I will say that I do not do it for hours. You know, one Barney show is about 45 minutes long. It's totally educational, and I learn all the songs and learn lots of fun stuff. So either Barney or Daniel Tiger is mm -hmm. thumbs up in her house, and with my daughter, she loves the bubble guppies, so maybe she watched two, and then that's it, and that, that, that is my little, my little secret. So... Um, okay, let's talk a little bit about just your transition from going from working to stay-at-home mom. Now, you mentioned two things to me. Um, one of them was lack of just having a lack of structure, and mm -hmm. then um, the other thing that you brought up was, you know, introducing yourself as mom and how it's a little weird now. So why don't you just first talk about your first one, which was about the lack of structure. Um, working in, um, you know, I guess it's, you know, the corporate world, um, 
everything is very, you get there at a certain time, you have certain tasks that you have to do, especially as an accountant, there's not a whole bunch of variation. <laughs> um, for, so for me, there wasn't a ton of, you know, variation for my work. I would, you know, get to work, do the stuff with the money that I needed to do, uh, get a few other things done, have lunch, do more work, go home, have dinner, spend time with my husband, and start it all over again the next day. Um, which, you know, is great. And, you know, it's a wonderful thing to get used to, but whenever you switch to being mom, um, that structure is completely gone. Yeah. <laughs> or, at least, or at least for me it was. And that was um, so difficult to get used to um, after our son got here, because especially when, you know, they're newborns, they only run on two hours at a time. And it's never the same at the end of the two hours. They'll eat, they might take a nap, um, they change and then by the time you sit down it starts all over again yep. um, and so getting used to something that's a lot more fluid and how I guess I mean like I said before they're very needy um, which they're made to be that way because they are dependent on you um, but it's a big struggle going from like you know almost exactly what you're gonna do at every time of day to things can change so quickly <laughs> from one minute to the next. Um, and you have to really learn to embrace that and learn to um, be more flexible. <laughs> so that's definitely a huge struggle. Um, and then the second one, um, introducing yourself as mom. And, you know, that's, you know, your main job is, a you know difficult transition as well because you go from yes I'm an accountant at you know this company and this is what I do and this is who I work for and these are the people I work with to hi I'm Ansley I'm a stay-at-home mom <laughs> and um, you know like I mentioned to you before um, it's very difficult to um, you know see yourself as more than that and it's very easy to get caught up in you know, how the world sees it of, you know, oh, you're a mom, or you don't have anything to offer to this conversation, what are you contributing? Um, and getting over that and seeing that your first job isn't as mom, your first thing is you're a child of God, like you are his creation, and, you know, that is the first thing that you should identify yourself as. And second, you are um, your mom. And then after that is your business. Um, and trying to get used to that and introducing yourself as like, hey, I'm a stay-at-home mom and I run a business, um, I think it helps a little bit because then you're like, oh, I'm a stay-at-home mom and I do this. Um, so I think just trying to get used to the fact that mom is a much more important and much more profound job that you can have like than anything else that you can do. Um, it's a huge blessing to be entrusted with children. And um, so it's, I don't know, it's just um, a big responsibility. And I think that we take that lightly. Yeah. Um, and it's not something that we should do because it's the greatest job that you can have. <laughs> Definitely. And I totally hear you. You know, we have a video series on the website called Your Roles Versus Your Identity. And I think it's easy for people to get really wrapped up in, whatever role it is, whether your role is in your career or your role as mom, like roles can change from season to season. But at the end of the day, whether you're a stay-at-home mom and that's what you do, or you're a stay-at-home mom and you have a business, there's no right or wrong way. It just depends on what God has called you to do. Um, I think at the end of the day, whether you're accountant or architect or whatever it is, or your mom, your, you know, um, whatever your role is, your aunt, sister, daughter, um, at the end of the day, your identity is in Christ, and, and your identity is in God and who he has made us to be. And just to say, even, even when I, I, mean, I struggle with it too, and I've been out of my profession for more than five years now, when people come up to me and they ask, you know, and I say, hi, I'm Gina. I'm, like, I want to go back and say, oh, like, I'm architect, or I'm, you know, residential home designer, or, you know, whatever we want to, you know, call it. Um, that's like what I want to still say sometimes, but it's not something that I do anymore, you know, or I could say, you know, I used to have a pasta business, I'm a pasta maker, or, you know, um, I'm a coach that can help you, you know, get back on track and get, you know, get you to your, your health and your fitness goals, whatever it is. Um, at the end of the day, 
we shouldn't even have to worry about that because our identity is in Christ and it just doesn't matter what anyone else is going to think of us or say. And I know that that's one of my biggest, has been one of my biggest struggles, you know, going from working and getting, you know, the accolades and, you know, moving up the corporate ladder and stuff to being at home and being mom and you don't get that recognition anymore. And you don't, you know, I mean, my husband's, he's really good at it actually about saying like good job and stuff like that. But still, it's not like I get a raise for like, you know, changing five poopy diapers in a day. Like, <laughs> yeah. I wish there were bonuses for that. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> oh, like, oh. I do. I try to give myself my own bonuses. Like, I'm like, okay, I did a really good job this week of, you know, not flipping out and just being calm and peaceful and joyful. I think I'm going to get a pedicure, you know, or something like that, you know, <laughs> so I try to like plan those things in. So like do have some me time, but anyways, we could totally get off on another subject and talk about that forever. So thanks for sharing that with me. Um, last thing I want to talk about are, you know, just what would be, we kind of touched on this a little bit, but if you have anything that comes to your mind, like what would be your top tips with moms, especially right now that have young children that have babies and are thinking about starting a business from home? Um, some of my top tips, one um, is have you time, um, or, you know, me time, um, you can't continue to, like, give and give and give and give and give, um, and go crazy, <laughs> um, you need to have time that you take, whether it's to go get your nails done, or just, you know, go to the grocery store by yourself, yeah, um, anything like that, just wander the aisles and look and see what they have, um, just to get some quiet time and be able to, um, you know, rest um and not have you know our child is young and so you know for me to not you know hear him cry for a little bit <laughs> um and he doesn't cry that often but there are just times when it builds up of like I have to get out like <laughs> I love him and I love my husband but there are just times that you yeah. know being a stay-at-home mom you can feel kind of trapped by the four walls around you and um I think it's really important to take time for yourself and whether it's go grab lunch with a friend or, you know, go see a movie by yourself. Um, I think that's probably, you know, yeah. one of the most important things that my husband has encouraged me to do is that's great. get out of the house, like go do something. <laughs> um, and don't feel guilty about it. I think is the other big part of it. Like you can't do it and, and then come home and be like, oh, I'm so sorry. And I've been guilty of doing that. And my husband's like, no, you have to. Like, in order That's to true. be able to take care of your little ones, you have to be healthy yourself. Um, so don't neglect yourself. Um, and, you know, make sure that you do take that time. Um, if you are thinking about starting a business, um, I do recommend looking into, like, all the little details that it takes um, I didn't do that before, so I ended up having to backtrack. Um, it can be a little bit overwhelming at first, but it would have been much easier for me to start my business um, if I had taken those steps beforehand. Um, and then um, the other part is don't doubt yourself. If it's something that you are really passionate about and something that God has laid on your heart to say, like, this is what I want you to do, um, and this is how I want you to serve me, um, I don't think it's something that you should ignore, um, but don't be scared, um, because if, if it's something that's that heavy on your heart that God has placed there, he is always going to do, um, his will with it, and so just give it to him and trust that, um, you know, he's going to take care of it, and he's going to take care of you, um, and just rest in that, and rest in the fact that you can do it. Like, there are going to be times when you just fall down and say, I have no idea what I'm doing and I can't do this anymore. Um, but just persevere and you will do great. You'll be fine, I promise. <laughs> great. Those are great tips. And I think I would add on top of that that, you know, it doesn't have to be something that's really overwhelming at first. You know, just put your feet in the water a little bit. If you have some ideas of something that you want to start at home, whether it's like making a product at home. Like I know a lot of people who just, you know, do simple things as making like hair bows for little girls, you know, stuff like that. Or maybe you've gone through an experience that you want to share with others and maybe you can actually take that and put it into, you know, make it into like a website or a blog and then some kind of 
video series that people pay for. I mean, there, it can go in so many different ways. Um, but, you know, I personally am the kind of person that I'll look like down the road, so far down the road that I'll freak myself out <laughs> and keep, like let that keep, keep me from starting because like maybe that vision that God has given me is so huge and, and, and it almost paralyzes me. So I've just had to learn to just take it small, you know, put some feelers out there. If you have an idea for something, see if, if, if people need it, you know, and then start putting something together, put it out there and just do it. And it doesn't have to take up a lot of time. It might just be putting 30 minutes a day away at something that you're really passionate about. And the last thing is you just have to be passionate about it because when your baby is crying in the middle of the night and you don't feel like waking up and working on your business, if it's not important enough to you, you're just going to sleep in every day. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's just one example, but um, it's, it's easy to let the outside circumstances around you kind of dictate your day. But if you can find like some focused time in yourself, whether it's putting your baby in the extra saucer or in um, the swing, just finding what works there, or even, oh, forbid the 45 minute Barney show, you know, just to give you some downtime to work on a hobby or work on your business. That's just the way to go to carve out time consistently. Great. Well, let me see if there was anything else I wanted to ask you here on my list. I don't think so. Well, thank you so much for being with us, Ainsley. And you can find her on Etsy at Blue String Boutique. Put that in the search there. Um, you can find her on Facebook, Blue String Boutique, or she has an Instagram page too, which is really great because you can see all the pictures of the stuff she makes. And then click in the bio. I'm pretty sure you have your website mm -hmm. link there that will direct you back to Etsy and then you can see all the stuff she offers and you know the holidays are coming up <laughs> and it's always a great you know time to buy something like beautiful for your wall or for someone else. Do you guys do like customized orders at all? We do. Um, we love doing custom orders. Um, it's actually where a lot of our ideas for products that we continue That's to great. From. Um, so if anybody wants anything customized with names or if you want something specific just let us know all right great thank you so much Ainsley thank you bye <laughs> bye